Good morning, campers. It is six o'clock, and um, just about to contemplate getting up. So today we're, we're after the two Corbett's, Ben Jerig Moor and Ben Jerig Beak. Current scenes outside. It's actually looking like it's going to be a nicer day than yesterday. Clouds a bit more broken, so that should be good. That's us packed, ready to roll. Half seven. <laughs> well, nature called for the first time in two days. I now feel like a new man. So there's Ben Jerig Vaur, that's our target today. Seems we never got there yesterday. There's a bit of a dog leg, the path goes down and it, the path then comes up behind this lump here. We were debating to cross that but it's pretty rough so we'll just uh, go by the path, I don't think that'll save much time. But what we're going to do is we're not going to go right up here, we're going to go around the back and there's a bialik between the, the two Corbett's, the other Corbett's, Ben Jerig Beak and that is our intended route what we do from there, I guess we'll probably drop down the other side and either camp or go to Chenneval If we continue on this path here, it'll eventually take us to Carmore and then pull you. But we're after this Corbett and that Corbett there, so we're going to branch off here. Uh, Loch Ben Jerig is just over there, so we're going to aim for this low point, leave our packs, head up the first one, back down, and then up this one. So there's um, Loch. Ben Jerich. and then this is where Fisher Hill gets a bit more interesting and you come off the path you've got all the bog so this is going to slow us down a bit that's us reached the Bialik there's Ben Jerich Beak and Ben Jerich Vaur but look at this look at this ho 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 that's amazing There's a hole of Anchalic laid out in front of you. It is liberating to be pack free. Feels so good. So light. I'm almost at the summit. Wait till you see the view out to sea. Wow. Bit of minor scrambling. Cool. All I can see the summit. Wow. Oof. Two seconds. Here we go. Wow.
Yes, yeah, so a wave cave. You'll laugh at this. We picked a different line coming off the Corbett there, and uh, it was like a little steep gully, and it was all loose. So I chucked the pole down, and then I continued on, and I dislodged a big boulder, and it landed on top of my pole. I tried to straighten it, but it's going to snap. So uh, I need this to put my tarp up. Fortunately, I made the, the pole a bit longer so it snapped above the height I usually have it at so if I snap it off, try and reinsert the pole it should be okay See this daft works here broke his pole I've got to try and fix it so I can use it for camping the night Oh this is really tight What are you? A numb nut A fandango I don't want to push that back in because if that snaps inside This is a tight one, it's the wrong one to break. When I get home, I never take them apart and let them dry out. I always just put them away, wet, boggy, and that. And then obviously, this is the result. Shit. I need mole grips or something, which I don't carry with me. It could be a boffy night, Kev. Oh, no, that's tight as a duck's ass. Right, with Kev's help, <laughs> I managed to separate it. Now, I'm just going to have to take it and snap this. It's actually stronger than what I thought it was. Maybe I should have pushed it in. What to do, what to do. Leave it later on and all right. <laughs> Done. Right, so now I need to somehow get that. It's not a perfect circle. You need to get that back in there. Got pliers. Yeah. Scissors. Get a rock, mate. Get a, a boulder and smash you. I'll smash you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> smash And there, we're back in business. Happy days. Right, that's the pole fixed. Had another snack and something to drink. Now we're heading up the bad boy, the biggie, the centerpiece, Ben Jerig Vaux. I'm at 700 metres just now and it flattens off a bit so you get a bit of a breather and then with a steep loose path up there you can see the three people ahead of me I'm almost at the summit but look at this wow I think I've got a new favourite mountain Whew. super boss Kev's over in the little show-off spot. <laughs> what a mountain. What a mountain. The views and everything, it's just... It's mind-blowing. It's stunning. This is the life. Ah, yes. It's nearly two o'clock. Um, I imagine it'll take us between two to three hours to get off the mountain. And then find a, a camp somewhere. We don't want to get there too early. But, um... So this is from the little miner top. We were camped away over there on night one. Or camped down that glen last night. And I think tonight we're going to aim for somewhere down here. 
but it's not too boggy, but that's the plan. Just looking back now, is like we've gave ourselves probably an out and back of about a kilometre in distance, maybe a bit more. But uh, it's nice to see the little spurs of the, the hill. What a mountain. I think I've said that before. What are you up to, Gadji? Just looking for the meaning of life. And we'll find it in there, mate. This is the meaning of life. Getting out and yeah, yeah. witnessing this. That's us back at our rucksacks. It's absolutely glorious. It's Rappel Clock, so Kev's getting that sorted and out, and then we will be heading down to Wild Camp number three. That's us on the shores of Loch Ness Selga. Anyway, we're going to walk a kilometre or two along here, find somebody to pitch for the night. Well, that's a tense pitch. Not the greatest pitch ever. Don't get me wrong, it's very scenic. It's just a bit lumpy bumpy here. But you know when you've you put a 10 hour shift on the hills and you've just had enough and you just want to call somewhere home for the night. That was kind of the, the case here. That's when we've got the water on the boil now. It's roasting in here, it's like a greenhouse. My granddad could have his uh, tomato plants in here. <laughs> Aye, they're a wee bit exposed out in the meadow, but I'd rather be here than the boffy. The wind's not too bad. I hope it doesn't strengthen through the night though. But this is my view. Not too shabby. It's gonna be a grand sunset tonight. The Fisherfield Big Six round has like three major river crossings that can be quite troublesome in spate. A lot of people get worked up about them. There's one around there where we were camped the very first night. We got over that without any issues. There's this one here when you're coming back and there's one more to do as you head towards Cheneval. And uh, honestly, in dry conditions, there's nothing to worry about. So the sun sets roughly about here in about an hour's time. So we're gonna head back to the loch and uh, take a nice sunset, hopefully. Well, that was a bra sunset. It's cold now, though, so retreating back to the tent. Well, it's half ten. I'm away to bed. Um, the wind's picking up. I'm getting gusts in here. I could do with maybe moving it around a little bit, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to see it through for the night. It's not that strong. Anyway, good night and I'll see you in the morning. It's half one. It's been woken up by the rain. <laughs> You're camped between the two rivers. If this gets pretty heavy, we're going to get stranded. I'm probably being dramatic right enough because it took a lot for the rivers to rise, but I'm hoping this is just a passing shower. I think we've been a bit overly cautious. We've abandoned camp because it was persistently raining for about an hour. Not in any danger, didn't get me wrong, but we just didn't fancy getting stuck between the two rivers. So we've packed up. 
we're heading to the buffet and now the rain's stopped. <laughs> do you know what? You've got to live by these decisions. It's a good drill in case we have to do it properly. Right, you packed Kev. Two o'clock in the morning. Bail camp. Alright, I know you can't see anything but we've negotiated the, the buggy bit. Now we've got a shell bit of the river and the ball face now literally just over there. Good morning from Shinova Wafi. We got here at 3 a.m. last night. Uh, managed to get a little room through the back, I'll show you in a minute. But uh, there was no need to break camp last night, but uh, you make decisions and it was a good drill. But we came across that meadow. Took us an hour to get here, had to negotiate all the bog and then we had that last river crossing. Uh, aye, so that was the decision we made. It was actually, worked out for the best because we actually got a decent sleep. It was, we were getting battered by the wind down there. Anyway, let's get to Chenneval. Really surprised there was only just The uh, four of us, there was two other guys up here that we met this morning. This is the main sleeping area. When I stayed here in 2014, it was stinking. There were so many people here. Had those Velux windows open, freshened the place up a bit. <laughs> Just loads of sweaty men. Fireplace, bench, that chap's away doing two of the Munros today. There's Kev. The old Wi Fi joke. And you've got your cooking area there. And me and Kev managed to blag the wee snug through here. So there's plenty of room. And you can get camped outside as well. So there you go, the grand tour of Chenevo Buffy. That's us heading back to the car from Chenneval now. I've got that almost hangover feeling about me, even though I've not even had a drink. It's probably just a lack of sleep. When I got to the Boffy last night, I was so tired, but I couldn't shut my brain down. It was like control, alt, delete, shut down. Nah, that brain was switched on, wasn't having it. Must be about four o'clock by the time I finally dozed off. <clears throat> And then the two other boffy habitants, the uh, surface must have been about six, seven o'clock. So I probably had two hours sleep in the tent, tops, and about three hours sleep in the boffy, maybe. We could drive home today, but we've both been given passes from our 
respective partners so it would seem daft to waste them so the plan is is to head into Liverpool <clears throat> and get freshened up and have a few scoops Hi folks, so we're in Broomfield campsite in Liverpool and uh, just been watching middle aged men drool over camper vans and motorhomes where I'm like, ooh, nice tent, how much does that weigh? <laughs> we're going in for a couple of scoops shortly. Kev's awake, sleep, see if he's up. Oh, awake. Oh, he's awake. <laughs> Alright, Gadget. How's it going, Chief? Cheers. Cheers.